Well, today we are firing up the Kamado Joe using that Joe Tisserie, and I cannot wait. We're making chicken wings using the Napoleon basket accessory that you buy separately, but it turns amazing wings to make them really crispy. And it's one of my favorite things with all the accessories you can buy and they're compatible with the Kamado Joes. It's really endless. So cannot wait to get into the details. So let's fire up the Joe and prepare the chicken and let's get going. It's time to set up our Kamado Joe and fire it up, but there's a few things I want to bring your attention to. Um, now, you typically have the charcoal basket that the Kamado Joe comes with, or you purchase separately, depending on which model you have, or you can purchase uh, another brand called Kick Ash Basket Company. It's got tons of accessories. I'll have a link in the description, also a video up here for you to check out. I have a whole video on all their accessories, and it really has helped level up my barbecue. I'd love for you to check that out. Also, uh, there's two ways to set up your charcoal basket in preparation for using the Jotisserie and also the Napoleon basket, which again, I'll have links uh, in the description about that. So typically, and so far my experience using this Jotisserie is you uh, will set up the charcoal uh, with a half divider and bank all your charcoal to the back of uh, the Kamado. And the idea is it's not, you know, fully encasing the whole basket and maybe overcooking uh, your food. And I think, uh, you know, big principle that probably is true, but one thing I'm learning is don't fill up your charcoal basket, even if you do uh, the half basket, uh, you know, and bank it, because uh, that raises the charcoal higher to the food and can really crisp it, especially if you're kind of doing uh, things around the house and you kind of forget to check on the food. Occasionally it could, over burn or overcook food. So something I'm gonna do today is I'm going to not use, the, I'm not gonna bank the charcoal. I'm actually gonna just have less amount of charcoal and make it flat on the charcoal basket to kind of have that even cook and see if that helps produce a more even cook uh, using uh, the jotisserie. So there's two ways, bank it, use that charcoal divider or just kind of flatten uh, the charcoal uh, to be not completely filled up so it's not higher for the chance of flare-ups uh, unless you're wanting to do that towards the end of a cook to get it nice and crispy. So those are a few things I'll bring you in, show you how I'm gonna set that up and then we will prepare the chicken and get this jotisserie going in that basket. All right, you're gonna notice that we've got the charcoal basket here. It's not fully uh, filled to the top. You can see the different bars and rows still open. Plenty of airflow and we can move things around, make sure that they're well balanced. Uh, and that's what's gonna do us right today. We're gonna fire it up and as we get cooking, if I feel like we're not getting enough heat, which I really has not been my experience, we can easily add charcoal if we needed to. So let's fire this baby up. And I'm, I'm also using um, a pecan wood chunk, which you really don't need uh, any wood chunk when you're cooking chicken, but I'm doing a little bit just to get a little smoky flavor. All right, friends, we are preparing these chicken wings. This is a little over two and a half, maybe three pounds of chicken wings, uh, wings and flats in here. Uh, patted these dry. What I like to do is I like to use duck fat to give it that n nice extra uh, crisp and it also uh, adheres um, the um, rub on there really good whenever we um, put that on there. So let's spray that one more time. And then today we're gonna be using um, some Killer Hogs barbecue rub and that's gonna give us a nice look and color. Yep. and then we'll give us a good toss. All right, now that we got those wings um, rubbed on, uh, we are going to use duck fat spray to get the inside of this, and not that I need to get the outside too much, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. Uh, this is just a, another precaution to help uh, the uh, chicken and the rub uh, to not get overcooked and really um, not to get too sticky inside the Napoleon basket. Now, uh, different people say uh, it's, it's a mess in this thing. 
and there's just no doubt about it. You're gonna have, you're cooking, you're gonna get accessories dirty uh, because you have rub and things like that. But this is just another extra step to help us uh, protect that. We can easily uh, do some warm uh, water and dish soap uh, at the end of our cook to help get this cleaned up as well. And then we're gonna toss these in the basket and I've already put the uh, Jotisserie bar in here, and this is probably about 85 to 95% secure here. It's not going anywhere. And we'll get this positioned on the classic two, making sure uh, if I need to make any adjustments uh, on the outsides, I can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and place these in here and get it on the Joe because we're at that. Uh, actually, we're out in 300 degrees right now, so we've got probably another five minutes for this grill to get up to temp. So let's go ahead and put the wings in here. And a, a lot of folks like to uh, put their rub on uh, at the end of the cook because the rub comes off inside the, um, the, the basket. So we're gonna just kind of keep an eye out on that process and see how we do. All right, friends, we've dialed in the temperature at 400 degrees. We have put on that Napoleon basket and you've got to line up the bars just right on the classic two, uh, just to give it enough space so it doesn't rub against the side of your jotisserie. I'm gonna close this so I don't uh, cook this too fast and burn it. Uh, so we're at that uh, 350 to 400 degrees. We're gonna let this cook. I'm gonna check in at 15 minute mark. So make sure I'm keeping this uh, cooked properly at the right time. I'm anticipating 45 minutes total, uh, and then we are going to sauce a portion of these, and just to demonstrate what that's like, and then another uh, part that's not, just so we can compare the taste test, and also my family likes it sauced, and some don't. So let's go ahead and uh, see you back in about 15 minutes to see how the chicken's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've checked this at the 120 mark. I just um, probed some of these at 150 to 160 throughout the basket. We'll let these cook for another five minutes. Um, and then we are going to um, bring up the temperature uh, and let the flames just hit those chickens to give it extra crispiness, remove a few of them uh, for the no sauce. And then we're gonna sauce a few of them for about five minutes uh, on the basket to get that little caramelization. All right, friends, what I like to do is now that we hit that 165 at 170 mark, I am gonna lift up the lid and let this, uh, the flames just kiss the uh, wings here on the Napoleon basket and just let it get a little bit crispy. Uh, and then I'll see what the temperature is to see if it's the look is what I want and the tenderness is what I want. Remove half of them for the no sauce and then we'll sauce a few of them and then put them back on here. Just to show you what that looks like uh, if you're interested in using a basket like this. All right, friends, if you're looking at the chicken and you decide, you know what, I want it to be crispier. I'm not gonna sauce it. I just want it uh, to be just coated with um, or the rub and just cook this way. But you wanna get a little crispier after and you're feeling like, you know, uh, impatient and you don't wanna cook this open fire uh, for that 15 to 20 minutes, man. All you gotta do, and I don't necessarily recommend this for too long, is stop the jotisserie and just let the chicken drip and all of a sudden it's gonna catch, the drippings are gonna come back on uh, to the chicken and it's just gonna coat um, that chicken and get it nice. And you can see how that fire is just starting to raise up as the drippings <laughs> go on and it's gonna start catching uh, even more of that chicken to give it nice color. I've removed the chicken wings from the basket just temporarily. This is gonna be the ones for the family that don't want sauce. And we're just gonna throw a little extra rub on there. Not that we need a lot. Um, that might give it a nice look and flavor. And might do a little bit uh, extra here on that. But these are gonna be uh, sauced in this Tennessee red blue hogs. And we're gonna lift this um, box up and it's gonna become a soaker for uh, the Tennessee red. And then we're gonna throw it back on the, the um, 
uh, Napoleon and let that soak in and caramelize for another five minutes. So let's do that and let these, uh, I'm gonna bring these inside, let them, let the family start eating them. And then we'll do a quick little taste test and final review. All right, guys, we are going to put a good layer of that sauce on. I love it. All right, friends, we have sauced up the second half of these wings because I just want to demonstrate what it's like uh, to sauce these and put them back in uh, the basket. And the deal is, uh, I know I'm going to need to clean this anyway, so I don't mind saucing it and then we'll just uh, soak it overnight and see how we do. Um, but I even still have with less charcoal, I still have a lot of charcoal left uh, and it's starting to heat back up. I'm gonna leave the dome open uh, to allow that sauce to tack on and crisp up on that chicken. And then we will, yeah, I'm gonna probably do this for maybe five to seven minutes, not too long uh, because we have already got the doneness we're looking for. Don't mind a little bit more crispiness and just kind of compare the taste with the sauce uh, in that rub um, in the basket this way and tell you kind of how it turns out. All right, guys, we have finished up cooking these wings. Uh, I have a little plate with two wings, one uh, here with some greenery reminding me that was cooked with the barbecue sauce a little longer and the one that was no sauce. And I'll bring you in here what that looks like right there and uh, show you a close up so that you can see the difference. But what you'll notice here is that this one that was cooked with the sauce and a little longer obviously got uh, some nice caramelization on that, some crispiness. This one also has some good crispiness, but it looks um, uh, just a little bit different than the one that was cooked with sauce. So I can't wait to taste test that. A few uh, observations, I'm letting this kind of sit on a grill grate that's metal uh, while it's cooling down. That's my Joe Jr. Uh, the Napoleon basket was great. Man, it was a lot of fun to watch and cook and just kind of open fire, it was awesome. Uh, no, I'm not really worried about cleaning because you know what, I gotta do that at the end of every cook anyways, so not a big deal. Uh, a few observations, these have these little screw knobs here that you wanna make sure that they're uh, straight, not hitting your classic, because I mean, it's a tight fit, but it actually works. It's, it's a cool uh, you know, third party accessory that you might wanna consider. Uh, and I was able to cook pretty much three pounds of uh, chicken wings, no problem. I can't wait to taste this. Another observation is the way I set up my charcoal. I really like having a flat bed of charcoal and not having to bank it. Less was more. I even had the less um, charcoal at the very end that I was able to kind of do a final crisp on the sauced wings. And I thought that was really awesome that I was able to do that within like 10 to 15 minutes of the first round of wings being done and then being able to sauce the second half. So let's get into the taste test. This one is the one without sauce. Mm. Mm. That barbecue rub mm. really stands out. Obviously super tender, easy to bite in, really solid flavor. I really like that rub. It's really, it's got just a sweet to, uh, sweetness to it. Um, I added the a little red sauce to this to give it a little bit more of a, a twang to it. So let's see what that does. And I like the crispiness of it. Mm. Wow. That is super good, guys. Wow. Mm. I want to keep going. That sauce, it doesn't overdo it, but it gives it a nice little kick towards the end, especially in that kind of back end as you're swallowing. It's just super tasty. I like both of them, but I really like it sauced, uh, especially with that red sauce. It gives a nice sweet, but yet kick to it. Uh, and that caramelization of the, uh, on the chicken wing, man, it really gives a nice good crunch. So I can't wait to uh, finish these off camera 
And I just wanna remind you, check out all the videos and recipes. I'll put a few videos up here at this point for you to check out or different playlists. If you're new to Kamado cooking, I've got a whole set of uh, playlists for you to start there. Great place to get started in learning how to cook on a Kamado, no matter if it's a junior or a classic size with all the accessories. So check those out. It's so much fun. And I also cook on pit barrels uh, and drum smokers as well. So it's a lot of fun. If you wanna learn the basics of barbecue and we grow together, then definitely subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos that we produce. And occasionally we'll do some fun barbecue shorts and not do full recipes, just do like 60 second recipes. Uh, that's a lot of fun too. So if you also wanna follow other social media accounts, I've got Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, and a few others. So I'll put those in the description as well. So guys, thanks for watching and tuning in. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought of the cook. Uh, and till next time, less hate, more love, good barbecue, and we'll see you soon. Thank you